Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up our folders. We're going to open up our ping MFA game. So once you've got your, your game up, what you do is you click the game frame. And if it's not maximized, you click the little maximize button here and it'll fill up the screen. What we did last time in labs three and four was we, we made the ball move and we um, made a paddle and cloned it, made two paddles. So what we're going to do today in labs five and six, we're going to move the paddles and we're going to test position events. Last time what we added was the bouncing ball movement. The first thing we're going to add with the paddles is what's called the eight directions movement. You would use that with a joystick or you'd use that with keyboard if you want to add movement to a keyboard um, letters or numbers. So we're going to add a, a movement. We're going to click the movement tab on, on the green paddle. Then we're going to click on static and we're going to click on eight directions. So we're going to test this eight directions movement to see what it's like. Okay, I'm going to click to an arrow. See how my arrows work. This right, up, down key, left key. Now I try the combination of the left and up, the right and down. Well, now we're going to put it on the orange paddle. Click the paddle once again. Go and click on the make sure the movement selection is selected. Click static. Go down to eight directions. Now the game, we only want them to move up and down, not in eight directions. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to fix that. So now we're going to change that direction so it only goes up and down. Click on my green paddle again. Make sure movement selected. I click directions. I click the numbers over here. I take away all the numbers and I click on the top and the bottom and click enter. So I have up and down line here. I just click movement, try it out. I can go up and down, but I can go, cannot go back and forth anymore. Let me try it on the other one. Let me click the orange paddle. We click the movement tab. Then we click directions. We click the direction thing. Then we reset the directions. We click north and south. We click enter. It's direction, not initial direction. Then you click the movement, and you test some movement. It should only go up and down. It shouldn't go right and left. So we, it worked. So now all you have to do is run the application, make sure it works. Now your arrow keys is, are going to run both the paddles because you haven't set them individually yet. So now what I do is I have to set uh, the, um, the orange one to player two. So I click it. I click player, I click one, and then I change it to two. So in order for me to set the player two controls now, I'm going to have to click the ping uh, tab over here. Go back to my ping application and click over here to my runtime options. It's a kind of little red thing on that piece of paper. I come on down here till I find players. Oh, it says default control. I click edit. Now right here where I control of each player, I click that. Now I go click the up arrow because I want that to be the W. And I want the down arrow to be the S. And of course, you can click OK. OK again. Then you're going to test it this time. Go run, application. And this time I'm going to try the... This is um, the arrow keys. This is the W and the S. Just check yourself out. Make sure that um, you, your movement uh, are on the paddles, that your paddle two object is, is set to player two. The paddle one object moves when W and S are, key, are pressed. Your, green, your paddle is green. Your paddle two object moves up and down when the um, up and down arrows are pressed. So I'm running my application. There you go.
this player player two and here's player one that's what you should see so in lab six what we're going to do is we're going to test and select positions so you can contain the paddles and the ball uh, so they can't leave the play area and we're going to contain the ball so it only leave on the sides and then we're going to reset the ball to the middle if a player misses it the next tool we're going to use is we're going to test the position of the paddle so what we're going to do is we're going to use a test position event and it happens when an object is in a certain position on the frame so if your object comes up to a certain place then something's going to happen so right now your paddles can disappear when they go over the top of the edge we're going to prevent them now so what I need to do is go to the view menu then I go to the event editor and I click new condition so now my new condition dialog box I'm going to right click um, my position of paddle one test position of paddle one so what I do is I click over here it says leaves the top select that then I click leaves the bottom select that so I got both of these selected they both turn blue see that then I click OK so now I do the same thing with the other paddle so I just right click that new condition then go choose my orange paddle then I right click it choose position test position of paddle 2 select leaving the top of the frame and the bottom of the frame and then I click OK so now we're going to make these paddles bounce so I'm going to cl right click this I'm going to click uh, movement and I'm going to click bounce so on this one I do the same thing I right click then I click movement and then I put click bounce so now the paddles are going to bounce when they hit the top or the bottom of the play area. If this works, then we shouldn't be able to run the paddles off the board. We're going to try that. We're going to run application, or like it says, you can press F8. Now I'm going to try and run this off the board. It bounces back. See, so now I'm going to try and go down. That has a bounce. So let's try this one. Yep, that one bounces back. So then we applied that bounce to it, so we're fine. Now we're going to contain the ball. Now you got to consider how you want the ball to act. In the ping game, the players will hit the ball back and forth toward each other. And a player will score ball points when the other player misses the ball. This means that the ball should be able to leave the play area on both sides. Like over here and over here if that's the ed edge of the screen, right? But it shouldn't be able to leave off the top and the bottom. So it should not have be able to leave at the top and the bottom here. So it should go off the either side and return to the middle. We're going to test the ball's position and make it bounce off the top and the bottom of the play area, just like the paddles. Later, you're going to add different events for when the ball, when the ball leaves the play area on both sides. So now I'm going to add the new condition. Add it to the ball. Right click, test position of the ball, and once again we're going to uh, make it bounce off the top and the bottom and press OK. So now I right click on the ball, and I can put pos uh, movement, then I click bounce. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to test my um, game, make sure it works. testing the game. So I'm going to click Run, Application. Now I just keep on um, going New F2, see if we can get it to bounce off the top. Just like that. So now we're going to put in the condition for what happens when a player misses the ball. So here you see the edge of the play area. The player has missed the ball because it hit the side of the area. Player one is on the left. 
So when the ball hits the left, aid, a left edge, that means that player one missed it. When the ball hits the right edge, that means that player two missed. That's why it's important that you keep yourself straight on these colors, at least when you initially create your paddles. You'll create conditions for when the ball hits each of the edges, and then you're going to add the actions that reset the ball to the middle. Later on, we're going to add more actions to these events to track the scores. So what that means is we're going to be setting a new condition. So I click here, right click the ball, go position, test position of the ball, and now I'm going to do left, click OK. Then I, right, then I click uh, new condition, then I want the ball to leave on the left. So I check position, position of ball, I check moving on the right. Click OK. Choose a position for the ball to return to after it leaves the play area. In this event editor, and the ball leaves the play area in the right now, in the ball column, I'm going to right click the box. Then I'm going to click uh, select position. And the X coordinate, I want to center it from side to side. And I'm going to put in there 320. That's the exact center. And in the y, y position, I want to um, put it in the exact middle of the up and down. So I'm going to put 240. So now I'm going to just click OK. And I have an X there, leaves the play area on the left. So now I want to do this for leaves the play area on the right. So I right click, I go to position, I go um, select position. So I put in 320 for the X coordinate and 240 for the Y coordinate. Center, center. And I click OK. So now both of them have been set to the center. So now I just test my game. I'm going to go Run, Application, or F8. And I just let it go off the side of the ball wall here. There you go. See, it turned right to the middle. That's what you wanted it to do. Close it out. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset the direction of the ball when it returns to the play area after leaving on the right. So I'm going to right click here, and I'm going to click direction, then I'm going to click on select direction. And there's already a checkbox in the box, but I'm going to add a second action here. I'm going to uh, take out the, at the direction, and um, I'm going to select a direction. I'm going to go from 14, 15, 16, 17, or 18 here. I'm going to click OK. Now the only thing that I need to do is create that additional condition for the leaving the playing uh, area on the left. Then click Direction. Then I click Select Direction. Then I take out, then I erase everything. Then I put uh, arrows at 2, 1, 0, 31, and 30, and I click OK. Now the only thing that's left to do is to check that event. So I click Application, and I check it out. So before you move on to Lab 7, what do you need to do? Make sure your paddles bounce when they hit the top or the bottom of the play area. Make sure the ball bounces when it hits the top or the bottom of the play area. Make sure the ball returns to the center of the play area after the, your player misses and make sure that the ball starts moving towards the player who just scored the point when it resets. And that's it. You just save your project and you're all done with Lab 6.